Well, Johnny Vaughan, first of all, congratulations. County are in the playoffs. Um, at the start of the season, is it fair to say that the board would have been delighted with that as an outcome? I mean, we're all obviously extremely ambitious across the club. So we felt going into this season, we had a squad to, to really compete for those automatic playoff spots. However, given the first 10, 11 games, to be honest, even the playoffs looked like a, a tall order. So, you know, fair play to Dave and the boys and everyone else involved to, to actually get in there and to take it down to the final game of the season. Uh, you know, albeit we were waiting, uh, the fate was in Northampton's uh, hands. Uh, you know, incredible effort. And we sort of go into the playoffs now, you know, confident that we're, we're the form team. Well, it's been, um, it's been an exciting week, I think it's fair to say, with the county fans. But let, let me just give you some numbers, if I can. Our attendances this season, second only to Bradford City. The average gate's well over 9,000, as you know. It's often been in excess of 10. Um, if we were in League One, we'd be in the top 10 for attendances in League One. Um, the support from the borough, I think, this season's been phenomenal. Has that, has that kind of uplift surprised you at all? And, and did, you, did you sort of expect that level of growth and to be taking all these new fans with you? I mean, we certainly hope for it, uh, that, that, that's for sure. But, you know, the level of support, you know, in particular towards the back end of the season and, to be honest, for all the away games as well, the yeah. support's been absolutely incredible. But I think what's really sort of reassuring to see the, the number of young fans coming through, the families there, you know, this is our next generation of fans there. And the last couple of years, they've really been able to experience some great highs and, you know, they'll be our fans going, get, going forward and taking us through into the next era. I guess if there's a... A downside to it, I know there isn't really a downside, but it, I suppose there is a sense, I mentioned the gates of, of, of 10,000, there is a sense that we're outgrowing, maybe, maybe we already have outgrown Edgeley Park. Um, none of us, I think, want to leave. It's our spiritual home, but what can you say about the, the stadium and the expansion plans? And I, I guess you You'd probably start with the railway end, would you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a good problem to have first and first and foremost. You know, the key thing, you know, a strong fan base is is a fundamental uh, pillar to any successful football club. Uh, you know, categorically, we'll be staying at Edgeley Park. Uh, obviously, we've already had a public consultation in terms of the stand re, uh, stadium redevelopment. We've sort of gone back and uh, continued to revise those designs and we're, we're almost at a point now where we feel fairly comfortable on the current designs. So the intention is to build a new stand where the existing railway end is, uh, but also to extend the Danny Begara at both ends and actually to link the Danny Begara and the, uh, uh, and the railway stand. So obviously we're, we're undergoing quite a lot of cost, consult uh, cost consultancies uh, processes at the moment. Uh, and then it will be taking it back out again to a public consultation and then in through planning. From a timing now of actually commencing the, the, the construction, you know, the club's got to do it at a time where we feel it's commercially viable. Right. So, you know, after the costs, you know, in the wave of significant increase in construction costs, you know, the cost for those uh, two areas of work coming in any, anywhere between 23 to about 28 million pounds. So huge levels of investment. So naturally, we only want to do that when we feel that it's commercially viable. You know, that would be, what would that look like? We'd be in League One for, for sure. We'd be consistently selling out Edgeley Park at the existing capacity week in, week out. Uh, and then again, because of the scale of investment, we would need to bring some external uh, funding in place for, for a portion of that, um, that investment. Do you know what that would give you in terms of a capacity? When you, when you do that? Yeah, absolutely. It'd take us up just below 15,000 uh, and also increase some of the uh, corporate um, hospitality uh, in the railway end uh, and also provide some additional provisions for the Danny Begara, which because of its, the, you know, the age of the stadium, it, it's uh, restricted in terms of what um, hospitality or food and beverage we can serve from that stand. In terms of the, you mentioned the cost of it, of it there, and it does seem astronomical. I, I know the club's accounts have, have been released quite recently, and and look, I'm a layman, so you're gonna have to explain it quite simply to me. But on paper, it looked a little bit alarming because it was talking about the losses almost doubling, uh, something around five million. Of course, I know the income has doubled as well, and of course, Mark's invested heavily. You've talked about infrastructure. I know the academy's been quite expensive as well, but is there any sort of cause for concern with those numbers? 
I mean, th there was no surprises in the numbers from our perspective, and it was all part of uh, our longer term plan. You know, in those initial phases, big investments needed from an infrastructure investment, but also investment on the pitch. You know, the National League is a notoriously difficult league to get out of. And, and, you know, we spent heavily to ensure that we won that league because, you know, with only two spots to, to play for, it's, it's extremely difficult, which is what, what we've seen with Knotts uh, this year. Um, we'd like to think a lot of that investment is uh, spent on the infrastructure, again, which sets ourselves up for this next phase, which is obviously improving the match day experience, increasing attendances. Uh, but you touched there on the academy and that you know that is a fundamental part of our strategy to moving the club towards a, st a sustainable uh, club you know the ability to bring young talent through into the first team to trade uh, players in and to bring uh, investment in uh, you know from player sales is absolutely critical so that that investment because th these accounts obviously took us up to the end of the 21-22 season. That's right, yeah, June 22, wasn't yeah, it? Exactly. So, you know, these sort of investments enabled us to launch the Cat 3 Academy after we got promoted um, uh, to League 2. And a lot of that investment was in the actual stadium and some of the non-match day revenue generating areas uh, at Edgeley Park. And Mark has been quite... Um... I guess bold in his approach because he's been turning debt in, in, into equity effectively. Is that something I presume it needs to carry on and he will carry on doing that? Yeah, I, I mean, we remain committed to doing that. Uh, you know, to date by the end of this year, Mark's level of investment will be circa £60 million. 16, that is, okay, I saw your eyes light, light up there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, £16 million. Pounds. Um, you know, and he remains committed to converting that. And as we mentioned last time, that just what, what that means is the club isn't burdened with debt from the investment marks putting in. It, you know, in particular in this early stage where we're really trying to fast track our way through the leagues and bring our infrastructure in line with clubs in in a much higher division. It's been great to see some of the, the new faces coming as well. You talked about infrastructure, but there's there's people as well, isn't there? And I think um, Tom coming in as the as the Chief Operating Officer, if you, if you like. Tell us about the decision to bring him in and what does that mean for your role as, as it's as it stood up till now, really? Sure. So, obviously, Tom coming in, I mean, it's a big statement of intent. We've been able to, and it shows that we can attract people at a senior level from, you know, from a, a top Premier League, probably the top Premier League club at, at the moment as well. You know, Tom comes in with a wealth of experience. The good thing that we liked about Tom's experience is uh, he's been there almost 15 years. So he was there after the initial takeover by Sheikh Mansour and he saw the growth and development of that club um, you know, as he grew uh, through the ranks. Uh, and you know, that experience is, and obviously the numbers, we're, we're talking different numbers in terms of the level of investment those guys have, uh, have put in, but you know, that sort of experience for taking City from the club that they were and really bringing them forward, you know, into the, to, to be honest, the global club they are today. So uh, from a day-to-day -day perspective for, for my role, it, it probably just enables me to step back a little bit more from the, you know, the day-to-day -day, uh, running uh, of the club from an operational perspective and, and look at some of the longer-term strategic objectives, such as stadium redevelopment, securing a long-term training facility. You know, so it gives me a, a bit more scope to get involved in these larger projects. I wanted to ask you about um, another initiative that you've brought in, and um, I think back to like when I was on the board and, and working with Steve Bellis and, Pitt and Richard Park and Gary Burton, people like that. The idea of a fan zone <laughs> would have <laughs> would have been so alien <laughs> as a Stockport County concept, and yet you guys have brought in the county courtyard. And I know Olivia said to me, "Will you get involved in that?" And I was I was a bit unsure, if I'm honest, because it doesn't feel very county. The way you've done it. It's been epic. I mean, the, the numbers, the scale of it. How pleased have you been with, with the county court? In, in terms of that match day experience, and you mentioned, you know, youngsters before, but bringing families in, what, a, what, what an achievement it's been. I think it's been great. I mean, I've been in there a number of times on match day. It's got a really good atmosphere and mm. vibe to it. Obviously, you know, you have the initial investment in creating the space, but you need the fans there to fill that space and create that atmosphere. And they've really taken to it, to, to be honest. And I think uh, part of that is providing, you know, additional areas for them to come and, uh, you know, pick, catch up with the mates or, or, or the family pre-match. 
I think what we've done with the food, with sort of rotating the food offerings, really sort of sets us apart from for, from other clubs. And there's been some great food uh, on offer there. And you know, we've been really, really pleased by the take up and and what that's brought to the overall match day experience. And I think when you're bringing you know, new there's existing fans that you want to provide these facilities for, but when when you're bringing new fans in as well, it's just another sort of reinforcement that this is a club that you know it cares, it invests in the areas that that fans can come and enjoy during a match day. Speaking of fans, obviously we're already looking ahead to next season in terms of season ticket prices, match day ticket prices. I guess it this may be an unfair question to be honest, Johnny, because the season is obviously not finished yet, but. Do you know where you're up to? Does it depend what division we're in, where the prices land? What can you, you offer the fans for next season? Well, looking at a couple of different options now, we're, we're almost at a point where we're, where we're signing it off. But obviously, we want to wait to see where you know where the season season ends. So hopefully, we're moving into uh, to League One. You know, we're we're acutely aware of you know the cost of living crisis that that the people are having. Um, uh, to deal with over the last couple of years and pro- probably for the next year, but from a club perspective as well, you, you know, a club the club is facing exactly the same challenges that all businesses are facing, you know, increasing energy costs, uh, increasing cost of uh, wages, uh, increasing uh, increasing costs of product and produce, etc. So, you know, th- there will need to be uh, a, a an increase in the prices, absolutely. Um, but we feel that whatever we do, we want to make sure that we're competitive and remain competitive with whichever league or, or division that we're in. Uh, and, and talking of, of tickets, we mentioned right at the start of this that sellouts now are becoming more commonplace. We've seen queues for the Salford tickets. Yep. I mean, look, there's no easy solution to an issue like that where you've got you know literally a handful of tickets to, to sell. But have you thought about maybe as a... I don't know, like a, a loyalty scheme or something like that. Is that something you'd consider going forward? Yeah, we've looked at a couple of options, and it, it's definitely sort of on the you know the medium term plan of, of what we want to do with the the overall ticket ticketing and uh, ticket ticketing platform and ticket buying experience. Mm. You know, naturally, we want to favour our season ticket holders. The, 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 these are the uh, you know season ticket holders are the are the supporters that that, that come in and obviously pre buy all, all the home games and. You know, we feel really passionately about ensuring that they get the, the priority access to it. You know, unfortunately, uh, s- some of the clubs, not to name any names, only offer a small number of uh, t- uh, tickets. So, you know, 5,300 season ticket holders, there's always going to be a scramble for uh, for high demand games. But what we also, you know, want to provide a system that recognises the non-season ticket holders that will come to you know, a large majority of their home games and as we touched on before, uh, those, that, the, those that travel and provide that incredible away support that we have. Bliss, I know how busy you are, so I really appreciate your time this morning. Um, wish you all the best over the next two or three weeks. I know it's a, it's a big, big, big time for, for all of us here at the club. Uh, have you got a, a final message maybe to the fans before we finish? Yeah, absolutely. You know, keep the faith. We're we're only three games uh, away from achieving the ultimate prize, uh, ultimately, and just make sure that Edgley Park's bouncing next Saturday night, and uh, and I'm sure the players will do the job and and get us to Wembley. It's always good to talk to you. Thanks for your time today. Cheers, Johnny. All the best. Cheers, Thank you.